morning i am dr neeti maheshwari assistant professor applied science and humanities department ajay kumar garg engineering college gazabad today i'll be talking about metallic bonding which is the bonding in the metals and giant metallic structures it is also known as molecular orbital theory extended to the solids now if i talk about metallic bonding in this case the metal consists of giant structures of atoms arranged in regular pattern the electrons in the outermost shell of metal atoms they are delocalized and so they are free to move through the whole structure and the sharing of the delocalized electrons gives rise to strong metallic bonds now the metals they have certain different qualities than other solids these metals they form crystals with close packing forming lattice then they are good conductors of heat and electricity they are ductile and malleable that is they can be drawn into wires or beaten into sheets they have high density they possess high melting point and boiling point they possess luster they are shiny they are hard and they form alloys as metals are hard ductile and malleable therefore a special bond that is a metallic bond is suggested and the theories related to metallic bonds they must explain the non directional nature of electrons and high mobility of electrons now coming to the first theory that is the electron c model now the electron c model says that the metallic structure is formed from the positive centers which are known as the kernels atomic kernels and they are embedded in a gas of free flowing valence electrons and there is electrostatic force of attraction between the positive centers and the negatively charged electrons here these are the positive centers and the negatively charged electrons so there is electrostatic force of attraction between them and bond occurs or bond formation takes place when this electrostatic force of attraction between the positive kernels and the electrons is overcome by the repulsions between the electrons so the outer electrons they are so weakly bound to the metal atoms that they are free to roam across the entire metal having lost their outer electrons since the outer electrons are moving freely therefore having lost the outer electrons individual metal atoms are more positive or the more likely positive ion in a swarm of communal electrons here are the swarm of delocalized electrons and the positive kernels they are embedded in between those electrons now the metallic bonding as i said it is the electrostatic attraction between the lattice of positive ions and delocalized electrons and electron free electron theory can explain the good can why metals are good conductors of electricity metals are good conductors of electricity because the delocalized electrons in the metal they carry the electrical charge through the metal so when there is no electric field the electrons they are randomly moving but once the electric field is applied these electron move in a particular direction they move towards the anode and hence electricity flow when we increase the temperature what is going to be the effect of temperature on the metallic structure when we increase the temperature the kinetic energy as well as the vibrations of the positive lattice 
or the positive kernels is going to increase which is going to cause an obstruction in the free flowing path of the electrons. Hence, conductivity decreases on increasing the temperature. And heat energy is transferred from one end of the metal to the other end of the metal because the heated electrons they gain kinetic energy and they move from, from hotter end towards the colder end. Now, here are the different metallic properties, their explanation and applications. The good electrical conductivity of the metal, it is because of the delocalized electrons, they are highly mobile and so can move through the metal structure in response to the applied voltage and application, they find application in the electrical circuits, for example, in copper. Next, good thermal conductivity. The delocalized electrons and close packed ions enable efficient transfer of heat energy. They are used in cooking utensils. They are malleable, that is they can be shaped under pressure. They are ductile, they can be drawn out into threads. So the movement of delocalized electrons in non-directional and essentially random through the cation lattice. So, the metallic bond remains intact while the conformation changes under applied pressure. So, they can be used in the different components of the buildings and for electric wires. They have high melting points because a lot of energy is required to break the strong metallic bonds and separate the atoms and this is used in the high speed tools and turbine engines. They are shiny, they are lustrous in appearance because the delocalized electrons in metal crystal structure reflect light. Therefore, they are used in ornamental structures. The electron free theory was very good qualitatively, but quantitatively the results were very lower than expected. Therefore, the free electron theory it was discarded. Next theory, metallic bond theory is the valence bond theory. In terms of valence bond theory, the structure of metal, it is described in terms of covalent bonds that resonate amongst the alternate interatomic positions in the metal. Now, in this case, the metal can arrange in different manner. The bonding can take place. Here I have taken the example of potassium, so K with K then they can be positively charged potassium atom or when potassium is attached to 2 they can be negatively charged potassium atom, they can be joined in different ways. The more are the structure, lower is the energy of the metal. So the true metallic structure is mixture of all the possible bonding forms and more structures they enable the lowering of the energy. One can explain the electrical conductivity on the basis of the ions present in the metal. Here the negative and the positive charges are present, so electrical conductivity can be shown by the presence of these ions. But this valence bond theory, it could not explain the thermal conductivity, then it could not explain the metallic luster and why conductivity decrease with increasing temperature. So again valence bond theory was discarded. Now coming to the molecular orbital theory which is also known as band theory. Now according to band theory here I have taken the example of sodium, electronic configuration of sodium If I write sodium, then it can be written as neon 3s1. So, the valence shell 3s1 has only one electron. When sodium they combine, 
when two sodium atoms they combine the there will be two atomic orbitals of 3s1 and the two and two molecular orbitals will be formed one of lower energy and one of higher energy which is the bonding molecular orbital and then the anti bonding molecular orbital so when two atoms are going to combine we will have 2 3s1 one one electron in both the sodium atoms and these two electrons they are going to occupy the lower energy orbital which is the bonding molecular orbital and the anti bonding molecular orbital will remain empty when three sodium atoms are going to combine when three are going to combine then there are going to be three electrons in the three atomic orbitals out of which the two electrons will enter into the lower bonding molecular orbital and the third electron instead of going to the anti bonding molecular orbital it will enter into the non bonding molecular orbital similarly when four sodium atoms they are going to combine they are going to form the four molecular orbitals the two will be lower of in lower in energy which are the bonding molecular orbitals and the two are going to be the higher in energy which are the anti bonding molecular orbitals so we can keep on increasing the number of sodium atoms and you can see that there is going to be full 3s bonding molecular orbital it will be completely filled and the anti bonding molecular orbital of the 3s will remain completely empty so this is the valence band completely filled valence band for the sodium and the conduction band is going to be empty now in this case since these closely spaced molecular orbitals occupied molecular orbitals will be formed and they appear like a band therefore this theory is also known as band theory so filled valence band these closely spaced molecular orbitals they are going to appear like a band therefore this theory is also known as band theory now in this case non overlapping bands are being formed what do i mean to say with non overlapping that since 3s orbital is only half filled so all the electrons are getting accumulated either in the bonding molecular orbital or the non bonding molecular orbital but the anti bonding molecular orbital is empty so the electrons can jump from the valence band to the conduction band for the conduction property to show their conduction properties and in case of sodium or when we have half band half orbital filled then non overlapping bands are formed now what do i conclude from this as the number of atoms increases spacing between energy levels decreases and the energy levels are so close that a band of closely spaced molecular orbital is formed the band is half full now as we are going to increase the number of the atoms the spacing between the orbitals is going to decrease and finally what we are going to get closely spaced molecular orbitals will be formed this is the bonding filled molecular orbital bonding molecular orbital and this will be the empty anti bonding molecular orbital now since the energy gap has decreased the electrons will require only a small amount of energy to move from the valence band to the conduction band and this was not possible earlier therefore metals properties are different from the other solids then because of this small energy gap it requires small amount of energy to move to an unoccupied molecular orbitals as a result the electrons they have high mobility that why the electrons keep on moving and as a result the metals they have high thermal and electrical conductivities now according to mot we can explain the metallic properties of the metal 
the electrical conductivity the electrons have high mobility and when electric field is applied then the electrons they readily move towards the anode and hence current flows coming next to the thermal conductivity the mobile electrons they gain energy and they move from the heated end to the colder end therefore have high thermal conduction effect of temperature the free flow of electrons is obstructed by the increased thermal vibrations of metal with rise in temperature therefore electrical conductivity decreases then coming to the luster the valence electrons these are the valence electrons they absorb light they absorb light and they move from the lower occupied orbital to the higher and excited state orbitals and while they come back to the ground state they re emit light which is seen in the form of luster next is the case of magnesium in the case of sodium the 3s was half filled when 3s was half filled the electrons got occupied in the bonding and the non bonding molecular orbitals but in the case of magnesium or beryllium here in case of magnesium the 3s orbital is completely filled so when two magnesium atoms they are going to combine if this is the 3s of magnesium it is going to be fully occupied and when this fully okay two atomic orbitals are combining they are going to form the two molecular orbitals so the first two electrons will enter into the bonding molecular orbital and the next two electrons they will enter into the anti bonding molecular orbital now in this case both the bonding and the anti bonding molecular orbitals are completely filled so the conduction band will not be formed in this case so it was suggested by mot that in this case overlapping bands are being formed that is the 3s overlaps with the 3p orbital which is empty the 3s forms the valence band and the 3p which is overlapping with 3s it forms the conduction band as a result the electrons can easily move from the valence to the conduction band because magnesium again it is a good conductor so to explain the conductivity mot says that 3s forms overlapping bands with 3p and since overlapping bands are formed therefore energy difference is very less so electron can easily move from the highest occupied molecular orbital to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital and hence they show the conduction now mot on the basis of mot we can distinguish between conductors semiconductors and insulators how we can do that the conduction band the conduction band is a set of electron orbitals the generally the outermost shells of the atoms in a conductor or semiconductor in which the electrons are free to move and thereby carry an electric charge then valence band it is the outermost electron shell of atoms in an insulator or semiconductor in which the electrons are too tightly bound to the atom to carry electric current and filled band energy band each of whose energy levels is occupied by n electrons now on the basis of mot we can distinguish between the, these three the conductors the semiconductors and the insulators now the energy bands which are going to be formed in case of conductors they form overlapping valence and conduction bands there is no difference between the valence and the conduction band therefore electron can easily move from valence to the conduction band then 
coming to the semiconductors here the valence and the conduction bands they are separated by small energy difference so we need to give energy to the metal so that to the compound so that the electrons can move from the valence to the conduction band and in the case of insulators the band gap is so large that the electrons cannot cross this band gap therefore they don't show any conduction properties now coming first to the insulators now in the case of insulators the difference between the valence and the conduction band is too high it is also known as the forbidden gap and generally it is more than 3 electron volts it is of the order of around 5 to 10 electron volts and therefore no electron is available for conduction large amount of energy is needed to move electron from valence band to the conduction band therefore they are bad conductors of heat and electricity next we have the semiconductors in this case the difference between the valence and the conduction band is small it is of the order of around 1 electron volt at 0 kelvin the conduction band is empty and the valence band is completely filled when small amount of energy is applied then the electrons they can easily jump the forbidden gap and last coming to the conductors there is no forbidden gap between the valence and the conduction band they form overlapping bands so the valence band and the conduction band they overlap with each other the electrons from valence band freely enter into the conduction band due to the overlapping of the bands therefore very low potential difference can cause continuous flow of current and hence the metals they are good conductors of heat and electricity thank you